Welcome to episode 105 of the Wooly Thistle podcast, coming to you from the gorgeous state of New Hampshire. Today is Friday, October 18th, and Rhinebeck starts today, and I'm your host, Corrine. The Wooly Thistle brings your favorite yarns from the UK and Europe and makes them easily accessible in North America. At thewoolythistle.com, you will find the best of British yarn, such as Blacker, Uist Wool and Jameson and Smith to name a few. You will also find yarns from Scandinavia, including Olcentrum, Plotolopi, Rauma and Tuku Wool. At the Woolly Thistle, we encourage Woolly Wonderlust and we share information about where the wool was grown and milled. We specialize in finding yarn made at the source, whether that be on wild Scottish islands or in the Devon countryside. We find it and share it with you. With excellent customer service and beautiful yarns to peruse, you will love shopping at thewoollythistle.com. That's two L's in woolly. The Woolly Thistle welcomes and seeks out customers, designers, authors, and yarn makers of all backgrounds, ethnicities, cultures, locations, ages, and orientations who possess a love of wool and craft. We value your work and your contribution to making the Woolly Thistle a safe community. You are welcome here. Let the Woolly Thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. Thanks so much, new listeners, for checking out the Woolly Thistles podcast. And for returning listeners, thank you so much for coming back. I have lovely images of you listening to this audio podcast on your way to Rhinebeck today. Wouldn't that be lovely? I hope if you want to go, you're getting to go. I'll be talking more about Rhinebeck in a moment. The best way to keep in touch with the Woolly Thistle is through our newsletter, so be sure to sign up for that. I try to always have lovely subscriber discounts and specials in our monthly newsletter, and you can sign up for it at thewoollythistle.com. So I hope you enjoyed our interviews last episode. I was feeling very... Uh, I don't know. I was feeling very nostalgic for being on Fair Isle, which I often do. There's, we're treated to so many photographs now from Fair Isle and Shetland. And of course, last week was Shetland Wool Week. And uh, I was very jealous of not being there. If you got to go, you're very lucky. And if you didn't, then, you know, you're in good company. <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed listening to my interview with Oliver Henry um, from a couple of years ago uh, when I was in Shetland with my kids. We spent a month of our summer over there a couple of years ago, and it was great. We met Oliver Henry just by chance when we visited the Jameson and Smith wool shop and, of course, Karis and Ella Gordon as well. And then that was followed up by an interview with Anne Sinclair, who is the historian, amongst many other things, on the island of Fair Isle. And as she says, she belongs to Fair Isle. I just loved meeting with her and chatting with her and hearing about uh, the olden days on that island where... While things have not changed very much at all, of course, they are still keeping up with the times. And I believe they now have electricity 24-7. When I was there, the electricity cut out at 11 at night and didn't come back on until 7 in the morning. And talk about disconnecting. I mean, for real, I think that was part of the magic of being there, though. But they did get their new windmill and they do, I believe, have electricity running 24-7 now. But uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed both those interviews. I enjoyed listening to them again and putting that together for you. So who's going to Rhinebeck? Who's excited? I know I am. I've been swithering and having false starts and planning to go and then deciding I'm not going. And I do this every single year and I should just get over myself. I was quite content that I wasn't going. It wasn't going to work out for me. And then 
It did. So <laughs> now I'm going and I'll be there on, I'm planning to drive over on Friday and I'll be there on Saturday morning for the day. And I wanted to tell you about a couple of meetups and things. So let's get that done right away. If you've been knitting along with us in the Marie Wallen Cal, which is our Wallen Along uh, hashtag, and you have an FO or you have a whip, bring it along and meet Sarah Pomegranate and I on the hill at 1230 on Saturday. We will be there with our Wallen knits and we hope to see you there too. It's the end of our Wallen along. Unfortunately, Emily from Fibertown and Sarah from Fibertrek will not be at Rhinebeck, but Sarah and I will and we'd love to see you. I believe the Ravelry meetup is always at 12 o'clock on the hill. We're going to be on the hill somewhere uh, at 1230. So just look for Marie Wallen knits. You'll know them when you see them. I'll be wearing my Burra cowl and hopefully my bright green little Centrum sweater. So I'll be, uh, I'll be noticeable. <laughs> Come and meet us at 12.30 on the hill and then followed right after that will be the usual one o'clock podcaster meetup. So I'm always there and I'll be there again this year. So come and say hello. I'd love to see regular listeners, maybe some new viewers. So yes, new or old, come and say hello. I'm very friendly and I love to meet the people who are tuning in and I'll be seeing all the usual suspects there, I hope as well. I just want to mention that the Woolly Thistle does now have a YouTube channel and we're posting video updates there um, every other Friday opposite to the audio podcast. Thank you so much if you're watching that. Please make sure you're subscribing to it so that you don't miss an update. Last Friday, I showed you all the new colors from a brand new vendor we have here at the Woolly Thistle, and that is River Knits. We're um, stocking 100% Wensleydale from them in several different colors, and also 100% Jacob yarn in a bunch of different colors, some of them quite eye-wateringly bright. So they're really fun. Um, they're British yarns. Uh, spun, grown, hand dyed, the whole shebang there in Britain. So I'm very happy to have them on board. They're lovely people and uh, really great to work with. And their yarn is excellent. So do check that out. I'm excited to have them here. So that's all the blather. <laughs> Haven't even really got started yet and I've jumped right in. Sorry about that. Um, I'm caffeinated today. So this episode includes Off the Needles, On the Needles, Cal News, and then we'll have a shop update. So we have nothing, nada, nope, nothing off the needles. So that was quick. But on the needles, we still have a couple of sweaters or three. We've got the Cambridge by Kimberly Barnett, who is part of Knitting Union, which is a collection it's not a collection. It's a group of three lovely knitters who have pulled their resources and are known as Knitting Union. And as I've mentioned Cambridge before, this was designed by Kimberly Burnett for Aran White yarn. And I don't stock Aran White. Uh, maybe I should. I'm not much of a knitter with Aran White. I much more tend to knit with the lighter fingering white yarns. But I really like this sweater. And so I rejigged the numbers so that I could try out knitting with the Ul Centrum, which is from Sweden and is a light worsted weight yarn. It's a three ply, so it's nice and round. I was a little bit worried that the motif, which is so big in iron weight, would maybe look too busy being smaller and having more of them, but it's done now and I actually really like it. So I think the last time I talked to you, I had a back done and I had maybe started on the front. And now I have finished both the back and the front. I've joined them at the shoulders. Of course, this is knitted in pieces. So I've joined them at the shoulders and I'm now almost finished one arm and then I'll be knitting the other arm. And then I just have to join the side seams and do the neck band and it'll be done. So I am fully expecting this to be done in time for Rhinebeck. Here's hoping. I really love it. I was a little nervous at how bright the color is, but I like it a lot. And when I'm at Rhinebeck, which I'll tell you about, I will be wearing it with my burra cowl, which I think will, will contrast very well with it. So look for me. Um, usually at Rhinebeck, people hear my voice and that's how they recognize me. But if you've been watching the YouTube, then you'll also know what I look like as well. I'm very friendly, so do say hello. It'd be lovely to meet you. Yeah. 
I can't wait. So that's the Cambridge sweater. I'm really loving it. It should be done for Rhinebeck and I'll be wearing it there, but I'll be posting photos of it hopefully very soon as a finished object. The other thing I'm knitting is the Ranunculus, which is by Cafe Midori, and that I'm knitting in John Arbin Textiles Devonia 4-ply. Oh, this sweater, I've had a lot of false starts with it. And I told you last time we spoke, I think, that I had over 100 extra stitches on the needles by the time I'd gotten down through the whole yoke and was ready to divide for the arms and found that I had way, way, way too many stitches. It's a mystery. So I had to rip that bag, and I didn't have a lifeline, and there are short rows in there, and it's lacy, and it's very uh, loose gauge, and I just got completely lost when I started frogging it. So I just went right back up to the neckband and have been knitting down. So I have gotten through the lace uh, repeats and I think now I need to just pay attention to the increasing at least pay more attention to it I didn't pay any attention to it last time I thought I was just like spot on the money and I know what I'm doing I'm a really good knitter I never need to count anything yeah no so I will be counting my stitches every chance I get I'll be checking in and making sure I'm on on the right path <laughs> Because I don't feel like ripping this out again. Although it's been a really good experiment to test the yarn. This yarn has now been knitted three times, thrice times. And it's still as good as the first time. It's really holding up well to the punishment of being knitted and frogged and knitted and frogged. So yes, high marks and hearty recommendation for Devonia. I know we're getting low on some of the colors. Lots of people have been ordering it lately, which is lovely to see. So I do have an order in with John Arbin to get more and that is coming. We'll put it in the shop as soon as we get it. The sweater on the back burner right now, sadly, is the Tidal Yarns. I'm knitting that in her worsted weight. I'm all about worsted weight right now because it knits up so fast, I guess. Tidal Yarns is Patricia and she will be vending at Rhinebeck. She vends at all the local northeast and I think she goes down to Maryland as well. So when you're at shows, do look for her. Her booth is absolutely beautiful to look at. Uh, she sells all naturally dyed yarns and they're yarns that she's made with locally sourced wool. And she has a lot of it done at Green Mountain Spinnery. So, you know, it's good stuff. And um, well, her booth is just lovely. And then Patricia is even lovelier. I love her stuff. I love her stuff so much. So if you do go visit her, tell her I said hello. Uh, maybe you'll see me there. I usually make a beeline to her first. <laughs> get my get my quantity before I miss out I have missed out before when I didn't get there soon enough so let that be a warning to you um, I know that Sarah Pomegranate who is yarns at Yin Hu she has provided a lovely Rhinebeck guide so go check out her podcast yarns at Yin Hu another audio podcast and her latest episode is a Rhinebeck guide and you know she's You'll love it. If you like what the Woolly Thistle has, you will enjoy what Sarah has to talk about as well. So check that out. Unfortunately, I have stalled out where I need to change the colors in this sweater. And I'm not sure what it's called. It's, I think it's the comfy sweater or something like that. It's in worsted weight and it's a top-down raglan, very simple construction, which I love. It's all one color, but then as you get to the waist, you change colors into a contrasting color and there's a cute little pocket and it's just lovely. But I stalled out because I was knitting other things. So I will get back to that. What else? The other thing on my needles right now, and you can see this if you watch the, the uh, shop update last weekend, I'm knitting some Jameson and Smith two-ply uh, scraps into a mitered square not a blanket probably probably more a cushion cover and I'm really enjoying it I've been knitting mitered square blankets for such a long time and it just dawned on me why don't you use your Shetland wool for this and of course that's a great idea because uh, Jameson and Smith two plies perfect for color work these mitered squares are lovely blocks of color and it's easy easy knitting 
completely mindless. And while it's this size, it's completely portable. So I am doing that and I hope to have something to show you next time on that. But it's just lovely and I would recommend digging out your Jameson and Smith scraps and starting a little project because um, the size of my square knitted on, and I believe I'm knitting on zeros, but you don't need to knit on zeros. You can knit on ones or US ones, twos, anything you like, but a fingering, you know, a sock weight needle is a good idea. And I only use two grams of yarn per square, which is crazy. I know that a lot of um, other patterns out there for this uh, have, have you used more yarn than that perhaps maybe they're bigger squares but mine are just little tiny two grams which you can find anywhere so I'm loving the texture of the Shetland wool it's lovely and wooly and it's you know that matted finish there's no shine to it there's no super wash to it it's just very squishy and um, colorful I showed it to you on the YouTube I don't know what to call that on the shop update, I guess, and uh, hopefully more progress to show you next time. Now, Shetland Wool Week, as you know, was last week. Yes, I'm very jealous that I wasn't there, but I'm getting over it. I don't think I'll get there for a few years yet because my kids are still fairly young and it's not fair to take off on them as soon as I send them off to school, I suppose. <laughs> I have the Shetland Wool Week annuals on their way to us very soon. And looking through the Instagram feed, I came across the Seaweed Slipover by Wilma Malcolmson of Shetland. She is a designer there and she has this beautiful vest knitted in Jameson Spindrift in the Shetland Wool Week annual for this year. I think it's going to be a huge hit. I have declared it. <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think I will be knitting it. This is coming up on my next to knit list. It's a full on color work vest, but the colors are perfect. It's perfect. It's so lovely. It's very feminine, but also very colorful. So I'm excited for that. So let's talk about Cal News. As I mentioned, the Marie Wallen Cal is coming to its end, and it actually ends right on the Rhinebeck weekend. I'm giving away a Jameson and Smith Baker's Dozen grab bag. Remember those? I'll be giving away one of those to a lucky winner. And I know that Sarah Pomegranate has prizes along with Emily from Fibertown and Sarah from Fiber Trek. We, the four of us, were co hosting this uh, knit along and we've really enjoyed it. I kept my project fairly small. I knitted the Barra Cowl, as you know. Sarah and Emily both knitted the Yell cardigan from the Shetland book. And Sarah of Fiber trick knitted her lovage from that was from I want to say windswept from that was originally knitted in Rowan something or other I believe in her windswept book I've knitted my lovage I knitted mine in Jameson and Smith two ply as has Sarah and I actually can't wait to see this her photos of it are beautiful go check out her um, Instagram that's fiber tricks she has the same colors of yarn as I knitted mine in, but hers are used in a different combination. And so it looks slightly different and it's perfection. It's so beautiful. So yes, I'm very excited. Maybe I'll have my lovage on as well. <laughs> I'll be the one with all the sweaters on. So anyway, come and visit us at Rhinebeck. As I mentioned, we're having a meetup at 1230. Uh, we'll be giving away prizes. Um, after the fact, I won't be bringing stuff. I won't be bringing my prize to Rhinebeck or anything. But it might be fun if we have enough of us to gather around and take a group photo of our Marie Wallen knits. Wouldn't that be fun? And even if you haven't finished it, bring your whip and, and show us. You know, we, we would love to see. Also in Knit Along News, the Willie Thistle's second annual sweater cowl, which started back in August, is finishing up on October 20th, which is also the Rhinebeck weekend. Thank you so much for knitting along with us. We're not quite done yet. We will be soon. And if you have a sweater that you're wearing to Rhinebeck that you knitted along with us, 
come and show me. I want to see your sweaters. I will be taking photographs. This is going to be so much fun. Please do. If you have finished your sweater and you're wearing it to Ryan Big, find me and tell me about it. I will be at the podcaster meetup at one o'clock on the hill as usual. So, you know, if you don't see me walking around, then uh, you will see me there. The prize fairy has been popping in and out very irregularly. And uh, I think she might be in again before before the end of the cal. So do keep on chatting in there. Keep posting your finished objects. The thread's getting longer. And I'm just so proud of you guys. It's been a wonderful cal so far. And I'm just loving all the chatter and support in the Ravelry threads. And uh, just keep that up. We're almost done, but we're not quite there yet. And now it's time for the shop update. The Woolly Thistle is doing great as always. So thank you so much for your support and for telling your friends about the Woolly Thistle and also for the YouTube channel that we are working on. Um, it's really great to see our numbers grow over there. It's still nice and small though. So it feels very comfortable and I love hearing from everybody. But yeah, the shop's doing great and we're very busy. It's October, so things are starting to get busier and we are trying to keep up with all the emails and uh, your orders so keep them coming and we are growing to better serve you so we're always working on keeping up with you and we really do appreciate that you shop with us so what do we have in the shop right now? Well, first up, I want to tell you about River Knits, which is brand new to the Woolly Thistle. This is a young couple in England who live on a riverboat on the canals and they were dyeing their wool there. That's where they started their business, but they quickly outgrew that and are now dyeing their yarn on land uh, in an old mill building, I believe. We have their Wensleydale, which is 100% British wool that is grown and spun there in England and hand dyed by them. And we have all the colors, I believe, that they have available in their Wensleydale. I did show it to you on the last YouTube update, which was on October 11th, if you want to check that out. Wensleydale, of course, is a lovely long staple wool, so it's drapey and it's got quite a lot of luster. It's quite shiny and their dye job on it is beautiful and many of you are enjoying that already so I'm glad we're also stocking their Jacob because that again is 100% British wool and they have the natural brown and the natural cream which we have in stock but they have also dyed the Jacob in some really bright colors and some other not so bright lovely colors so we have all of those too I think I want to make a pair of Texas mittens out of their Jacob they're 50 gram skeins so that's good for mixing it up and doing a little bit of color work. And I think that that yarn will be great for mittens and say a sweater, an outerwear sweater, something like that. It is indeed very rustic. Um, so it's not the softest of yarns at all, but we still love it here at the Woolly Thistle and it is doing well as well. So thank you very much, River Knits, for working with us. We really love having you in the shop and we hope you'll be here for a long time to come. So do check them out and be sure to check them out on our YouTube channel as well. Also, uh, we are doing great business with West Yorkshire Spinners uh, Christmas yarn. Their holiday yarn this year is Robin and it is a more muted uh, Christmassy colorway than usual, but it still works. It's perfect. They have a choice of different contrast colors for heels and toes. And the most Christmassy out of them would be the Cayenne Pepper, which is a Christmassy, very bright red. The Robin yarn itself has browns and creams and it has the turmeric colorway which is a lovely pumpkin-y yellowy orange quite soft colorway people are loving it and uh, we are offering several different options so that you can maybe buy in bulk a little bit and get a deal we're offering up to 25% off the price of the yarn if you buy five skeins and there's different uh, price points as you go up I think if you buy three skeins of it or the contrasting colors that go with it you get 15% off or maybe even more than that is might be over 15% but thereabouts and if you buy four skeins of any combination of those colors you get 20% off and five skeins is 25% off so we're trying to do you a, a solid deal on that because we know a lot of you want to knit socks for everybody 
and you need a little bit more yarn to do that. So we wanted to give you a hand with that. So do take advantage. Every skein of Robin that you buy gets a copy of the lovely pattern that is written by Winnick Mum, uh, who is in partnership with West Yorkshire Spinners again for this pattern. And it's a lovely ribbed sock pattern with a little cable going up the front and back. So it's very pretty and you get that free with your purchase of a ball of robin yarn. And of course, it's the British robin, which is the cutest bird in the world. Very, very sweet little round guy with a bright red chest breast. It's a lovely deal. You can, of course, just buy one ball of robin or you can buy a ball of robin and a contrasting color and you'll get the pattern. So please do take advantage of that. We've got it nice and early for you so that you've got plenty of runway up to the holidays to get those knitted. Let's talk about books quickly. Uh, Fano Strick by Crystal Seyfarth. Many of you got in touch, asked me if I would stock this. So I did some research and I now have it available at the Woolly Thistle as a pre-order. I think the reason uh, you guys got in touch is the shocking price of shipping. It costs more to ship the book to you uh, from Denmark than it does to buy the book. So the shipping's more expensive than the book itself. And the book is a gorgeous hardback book of over 150 pages with Crystal's beautiful color work designs. Fano is the island that she lives on and grew up on. And it is um, a Danish island. And as she talks about, she and her people look outward to the sea. They look out to the big world. And so her book reflects that with her designs. Um, she is quite a wonderful designer. And I know that she has a connection to Loch Ness Knipfest. And uh, so if you're going to that, that actually is happening right now, I believe. If, if you're listening to this when I release it, I do believe that Loch Ness Knipfest is happening right now. And I hope they're having a wonderful festival. So she may well be there at that. So anyway, I did inquire and find out that I could order the book. And so I've done that. The shipping is still exorbitant to get it to me, but I do have that economy of scale because I'm ordering several books at once. So I have put that in the shop and many of you are purchasing it. Thank you very much. It's not a cheap book, but I think it's a good deal for you in that it's costing you a lot less than if you were buying it yourself from Denmark. So check that out. I want to also let you know that uh, Shetland Wool Week pre-orders are starting to or will be starting to go out. I know that the first shipment of books is already on its way to me and perhaps by the time this goes live on Friday we'll have them and we'll start sending them out. I'm getting several shipments of them and we will send your order out in the order in which it was received. So the first orders will be going out very soon, probably the start of uh next week after you listen to this. I can't wait to get my hands on it and have a good read myself. Um, I haven't seen it yet uh, in the flesh. And I cannot wait to see The Seaweed Slipover by Wilma Malcolmson. I think that's the must knit for me out of that publication because it is a sleeveless pullover that is color work all the way up and down. And the colors are just so pretty. Of course, it's Shetland Spindrift that this is knitted in. And I've gotten the colors in and I'll be making kits for that just as soon as I get my hands on the Shetland Wool Week and I know how much of each uh, yarn is needed for the knitting of it and I hope that you'll be wanting to knit it too. It's very, very pretty. So I'm looking forward to seeing that and just, you know, everything that's in the Shetland Wool Week anyway. It's such a good read. You know, for those of us who didn't get to go to Shetland, it's a little bit of Shetland just for us. So those are still available. I do have some left still in stock, as it were, uh, still going as pre-orders. When we have received them all in and we have stock sitting in the shop, it will no longer be a pre-order and you'll be able to buy it and get it right away. Knitting Outside the Box by Bristol Ivy, published by Pom Pom. Knitting Outside the Box 2, this is. It's Drape and Fold is what it focuses on. That will be released this weekend, which is Rhinebeck weekend. And uh, so we have those in stock. So if you would like to purchase that, we have that available. Icelandic Hand Knits by Helen Magnuson is doing great guns as well. We still have a few of those available. And this is a lovely book showing the history of Icelandic hand knitting some historic patterns in there and lovely pictures of Iceland too. 
This Golden Fleece is still selling like hotcakes as well. This is such a great book that I think many of you guys have already purchased and are enjoying, I hope. It's great reading. And I noticed over on Ravelry that Louise of Knit British, who is now Woolwork, has a reading group on her Ravelry group. So if you're interested in that, when I checked, they were working on the first three chapters. So go ahead and uh, join them if you'd like to. And then there is Meadow by Marie Wallen. That's her newest book. And we were selling that as pre-orders and we sold out of our pre-orders. We do have more books coming and I'm just holding off until they get here and then I'll put them in the shop so that when you order it, you will get your copy right away. So those pre-orders are all finished and any further stock will be available here in the shop for you. So I'll be putting them in the shop soon. And as always, if something is out of stock and you would like to be notified when I have it back in, stock the way to do that is in the product page where you would put it in your cart you'll see just under the purchase button that there is a tab that is uh, notify me and if you click on that you can put your email address in there and we will send you an email as soon as that goes back in the shop and so you're the first to know when it's back so in meadow there are seven beautiful garment patterns Uh, knitted in Jameson Spindrift. And I've put together a few yarn sets from the book. We have Mallow, which is an all over lace sweater. And it's in a lovely blue love it colorway. It's a very nice gentle blue. Then there's Cornflower, which is another lace and twisted stitch textured sweater that's really lovely. And that is knitted in Moorgrass, which is a green. I'm doing Nigella, which is the cover image of the book. So it's two colors and it's a it's a longish um, sweater that's very flattering. And because I'm biased, I also have made kits for Thistle, which is an all over purple sweater with a colorwork yoke, colorwork around the waist and the cuffs, too, if I remember right. Very delicate, lovely color work. So those are the four that I have selected for making kits with for now anyway. And uh, they're currently in the shop. So you can look at those yourself. Also from Marie Wallen, we still have Shetland books in stock. And I'll be getting more of those because I think they're going to sell out again. And we're kind of low on the on the yarn sets for Shetland, but I do have more yarn coming. So Unst is in, we have that available. We have Scalloway, Tam and the Scary's Mittens. Those are available. But uh, Yell, Bressa and the Burra Cowl are currently not available until I get this yarn color back in. And that'll be in very soon. So again, just click on the notify me button in the product page if you would like to be notified when that's back in stock it shouldn't be too long and wildwood which is marie's book uh, featuring her own yarn british breeds we have the walnut tam kit available for that and uh, the hawthorn which is very very popular as well as the holly which is a lovely slip over sleeveless all over color work piece those are currently out of stock because i'm completely almost i think i have one skein of raw left. And so I'll be getting more of that in. And when that comes back in, everything will be available again. We're currently out of stock of Windswept to North Sea, but that's coming over as well. And I have a few more gift boxes of Marie's British Breeds gift boxes, and I'll be putting them in the shop probably in November in a couple of weeks time. But I wanted to let you know that I do have them. The best thing to do, again, is to click the notify me button if you're interested in knowing when those go in stock. They have sold out very, very quickly every time I've put them in the shop. And so I will set you up. I will probably, if you're on that list, you will get the first notice along with if you're on my subscriber list, my newsletter subscriber list. So if you're not already subscribed to the newsletter, please do so because you will uh, receive an email as soon as I plan to put the gift boxes in the shop. And then you will know when to be at the computer so that you can buy yours. I hope that makes sense. 
And we have plenty of Rama in the shop. The new colors are doing really well. So do check them out. They're absolutely beautiful. And um, I just want to tantalize you a little bit with the idea of the Jameson and Smith Baker's Dozen grab bags coming back. Haven't decided exactly when they're coming back, but they'll be back fairly soon. So if you're interested in that, keep your ears up. If you don't know, these are bags of 13 balls of Jameson and Smith two-ply yarn. I usually try and include at least two neutral colors in there too. And we sell them off at a discount that is very, very favorable to you. Every bag is different. So if you order two bags, they're going to be different from each other, which is nice. We sell them like hotcakes. They're really popular and um, they're really fun. And um, we haven't done them for quite a long time. So I think those need to come back. So um, keep your ears open. You'll hear about them in the newsletter as well. I try to give all my first notices of things in my newsletter so it's worthwhile being subscribed and you can do that by going to the shop and right at the bottom there is a little place to put your email or there is a newsletter tab at the top in the main menu it says newsletter you can click on that and give us your email there and then you'll be on the list so I think that's everything for the shop update right now. I'll be at Rhinebeck this weekend and then I'll be back on Friday on YouTube with a shop update there and uh, probably some stories to tell you. Uh, if you're going to Rhinebeck, I hope to see you there. And if not, I'll be seeing you on YouTube and then I'll be back here with the audio podcast in a couple of weeks. So busy, 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 but it's all really fun and we are loving uh, serving you. So do uh, let us know if you have any questions about anything. We do try to get back to you very quickly. And um, yeah, let us know if there's anything that you want us to sell in the shop. We're always happy to look into it. If we don't offer something, there's probably a good reason why. But, you know, we do try to respond to your requests for stocking yarn. So anyway, I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting, take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. That's the end of another episode, but it doesn't have to be over. Thank you for listening to the Woolly Thistle podcast brought to you by the Woolly Thistle online shop. You can find items discussed in this episode at thewoollythistle.com. That's two L's in Woolly. You can find our Ravelry group by searching for The Woolly Thistle. Find our podcast on iTunes or at thewoollythistle.com. You can speak to Corinne at hello at thewoollythistle.com. Follow The Woolly Thistle on Instagram at The Woolly Thistle and join our newsletter for subscriber specials and all the news right on thewoollythistle.com. <laughs> <laughs>